So The Good Place is a thing. For a while, this was the smartest show on television. Not that another show beat it out, it just ended. But man, was this ever a hilarious show with overarching themes and a deep and penetrating existential and ethical exploration of society. Every episode covered a different philosopher or philosophy and then applied it with hilarious results. Throw in a few scatological jokes for good measure and fucking sign me up. Somebody royally forked up. This was a show that I watched when it first came out weekly. You remember when shows used to come out weekly instead of all at once? But yeah, all the way back in 2017, man, that feels like a long time ago. The show came out and it blew me away with its clever premise and how comedic the writing was. I was engrossed, and the deeply flawed and quirky characters had me invested in their arcs, but they were also a group of just absolute dumpster fires pretending to be people, each uniquely fucked in their own neurotic way. It's not really a surprise that I would eventually want to talk about a show that's based in philosophy. I've actually been sitting on this episode for well over a year because there's a lot I could cover, but I wanted to stay focused on one thing. Every season of The Good Place introduced a new kind of scenario for its characters, and although the season 1 finale had the biggest revelation, and I'll get to that, what I'm more interested in is the scenario set up by each season, and often within individual episodes, and how they convey and teach philosophy in a particularly effective manner. The show does this by presenting its characters with a philosophical premise, extending and explaining that premise to the audience, and then actively putting those ideas to the test within the show's narrative. The result makes for this razor-sharp show filled with humor, but also extends into the methodology and pedagogy of philosophy. And so today, I want to talk about The Good Place. The Good Place began when sitcom producing legend Michael Schur started thinking about his next project after the success of the police comedy Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Once it was clear that Nine-Nine was a hit, and the fact that Schur was part of the team responsible for the American office and Parks and Recreation, Schur found himself in a position where he could pitch more bizarre and heady ideas. I mean, with his track record, studios were probably jumping at the chance to work with him. He could have pitched whatever the fuck he wanted. But instead of another sitcom based on contained episodes with season-long arcs, Schur wanted to create something that was far more story-driven on an episode-to-episode -episode basis that dealt with the topic of ethics and existentialism. In 2015, NBC announced that they were working with Schur on his new show, which would premiere in the 2016-2017 television season for 13 episodes. Closer to its premiere, the cast was announced, with Kristen Bell, William Jackson Harper, Jamila Jamil, Manny Jacinto, Darcy Carden, and the legendary Ted Dance. The show ran for four seasons from 2017 to 2020, and although it was highly acclaimed and incredibly popular, the creative team including Schur opted to end the show when they reached the conclusion of these characters' story. Thank goodness. I can't stand it when studios drag shows out. I already mentioned the season 1 finale twist, so if you don't want that or anything else spoiled and you managed to avoid looking it up on the internet this far, this is your final spoiler warning. Here we go. The story begins with Eleanor Shellstrop finding out that she has died and has wound up in the good place. Which is all well and good until Eleanor reveals to her supposed soulmate Chidi that she is in fact not the Eleanor Shellstrop who did all those wonderful things, but actually a horrible human being who doesn't belong in the good place. There's been a big mistake. I'm not supposed to be here. Wait, what? Eleanor doesn't want to go to the bad place. <laughs> Well, it doesn't sound awesome. Then asks Chidi to teach her how to be a good person. Along the way, Chidi and Eleanor meet Tahani, a seemingly perfect philanthropist, and her soulmate, the Buddhist monk Jian Yu. Chidi helps Eleanor attempt to fit in and become a good person so she can stay without lying, but when it's revealed that Tahani is not really that perfect, and Jian Yu is actually Jason Mendoza from Florida, the four try to find a way to be virtuous people while keeping up the pretense of being good, until Eleanor realizes that the four of them only cause each other stress when together, and if all of this was set up by Michael, then this must in fact be the bad place. In season 2, the four of them realize that this experiment has been happening over and over again with their memories wiped, but every time they discover that this was the bad place. I think we're in the bad place. Jason figured it out? Jason? This is a real low point. Michael is devastated that his experiment doesn't seem to be working, and so the four attempt to teach him to be a good person, er, demon, all while trying to avoid the wrath of the bad place. In Season 3, the characters return to their lives on Earth with no memory of the afterlife, and slowly find one another and begin trying to figure out how to be good people and make sure they get into the good place. And in the final season, it's revealed that due to the unintended consequences of everyone's actions, no one has made it into the good place in centuries. 
The main characters then set about trying to rail against the powers of the universe to create a better afterlife for people where they can continue to learn and grow and eventually move on to the after afterlife where they return to the universe and effectively die. Let's cut to the chase. At the end of the first season, it's revealed that the good place everyone thought they were in was the bad place, and the four human characters have been sent there because they are perfect for torturing each other. Holy mother forking shirt balls. If you know any philosophy at all, then you know that this is essentially the same premise as Jean-Paul Sartre's existential play, Hui Clo, or No Exit, which is awesome, but it isn't the main point of what I want to get at today. Nor is the finale of the show where they tackle ideas of immortality and overcoming death, which is also awesome and just as existential, but what I'm more interested in is exploring how the show presents these ideas rather than the ideas themselves. The Good Place is indicative of a trend that has become more apparent in sitcoms lately, and that's an inclination towards story-driven plots and character progression over the course of seasons and episodes. Sitcoms in their original format were presented as a tune in whenever you want and watch the antics of the characters unfold kind of show. At the end of the episode, everything would return to normal, so the next time you tune in, whenever that might be, the setup would be exactly the same. More recent sitcoms have had slow-moving romances to give audiences a carrot to keep coming back to week after week. We see this kind of story progression occur in most of Michael Schur's other shows. Although when I say slow progression, I mean like fucking glacial. In The Good Place, every episode introduces new stakes to the story. In the early episodes of season one, it is the revelation of Eleanor not being a good person, and then her telling Chidi, and then the discovery of Jason, and so on. This is significantly faster than most shows of its ilk, but this also introduces more complexity into the world and the lives of its characters. This progression is key, because the show is built upon its characters learning ethics, and there are only so many iterations on ethics you can have when the show returns to an original state at the end. When the stakes change, the characters can be presented with new challenges and overcome them with new ideas. This isn't new for serialized dramas, but for a show focusing on comedy that is presented as a sitcom, it's pretty rare. But unlike serialized dramas, The Good Place takes this one step further by not only having new situations for its characters to hurdle, but presents them in the philosophical terms these kinds of story beats are usually rooted in. Because Chidi is an ethics professor, when Eleanor or anyone else has an issue, they ask him for advice or for a lesson on that particular problem. The characters are actively, or at least attempting, to learn the philosophy in order to become better people. Eleanor is usually adverse to the teachings of the day when the lesson is on ethics, but at the end of the episode she usually comes around and sees the importance of the lesson or the effect her actions have on others and grows as a person. This growth then affects her character arc and the show as a whole, which leads to a new set of issues. The character's learning ethics directly affects the format of the show and vice versa, and that is exceedingly good writing. In the beginning, the characters spend most of their time trying to learn to be good people through these lessons, but with increasing regularity, the lessons start to become about existential issues. You know, now that I'm dead, how do I contend with how I lived my life and what will I do with my afterlife? The world is empty. There is no point to anything, and you're just gonna die. The show's central thesis is constantly reiterated. The real question, Eleanor, is what do we owe to each other? And not only is this an ethical question, but it's also an existential question. And as the characters see the changes in themselves through their growth, they begin to see the effects and impact their life has on one another. Again, playing into the loop of character trajectories informing the format of the show as characters go from thinking about how to be better people from moment to moment to how can I live my whole life, or afterlife as the case may be, in a meaningful way for myself and others. This is also explored in another one of Sartre's essays called Existentialism is a Humanism, which essentially goes over one's contemplation of the meaning of life, which leads one to thinking about how they should live their life. And each of the characters play that throughout their arc in the show, which is reflected in the shift from ethics to existentialism. Because we're invested in the characters in the show, we want to see what's going to happen to them next. Will Chidi and Eleanor wind up together? Again? Will Michael ever understand what it means to be human? How do you measure the goodness of a person? And most importantly, what do we owe each other? And through our investment in the characters, The Good Place manages what I think is its greatest achievement, which is teaching philosophy to audiences in an accessible and entertaining fashion without reducing the value of any of those components. Early on, the show presents Chidi's lessons as boring for the usual boring comedic reasons. Are we sure we should be paying attention to these guys? It's like who died and left Aristotle in charge of ethics? Plato. But as the show explores the concept or philosopher of that episode, it doesn't shy away from the fact that its characters are getting something out of reading and understanding philosophy. 
If you're like me and you like philosophy, The Good Place is a great way to introduce some basic concepts to friends in an accessible way. The show is only a standard 22 minute presentation, so it's not as though they're going into any kind of deep dive into these concepts. What do you think this is, YouTube? But the show is capable of going over these concepts quickly incredibly well. When I talk about philosophy and conversation, or when I'm brainstorming and it's outside the structured nature of this is a thing, people are often put off simply by my even mentioning the word philosophy before I even breach the point. I'm gonna make some sweeping generalizations, so fair warning, but generally audiences are put off by the idea of old white dudes talking about things that don't affect their everyday lives. At least that's the perception of what philosophy is. But it's so much more than that, and The Good Place has created a much needed bridge that spans the gap between accessibility for a general television audience and the academic bullshit of what people view philosophy as, and often just straight up makes fun of that kind of armchair philosophy. All right, nerd. But philosophy is everywhere and can be found in most things. I use philosophy to try and understand what makes art great and why we enjoy it. The Good Place uses philosophy to teach its characters lessons about themselves and the world, but the show is an excellent introduction to some of these ideas with no expectations to look deeper, but with an incredible place to start. And the result is that the characters and viewers are both hopefully led back to the question, what do we owe each other? The last really cool thing that The Good Place does has to do with how it teaches philosophy to its viewer, and this is actually an incredibly interesting aspect of philosophy in itself. I already mentioned that the characters are used as a means to hook viewers into watching, and that they act as a vehicle to pull the viewer through the concepts being presented, but they are also a stand-in for the audience. The Good Place can reach some heady conclusions because it has characters to act out or execute these scenarios. This is exactly what a TV show is, and theming is important, and good follow-through has a concept introduced and then the characters internalize it and then apply it to their situation either well or poorly in a way that is gratifying for the purposes of storytelling. But placing fictional characters or entities into a setting and thinking about how they might react is also the exact definition of a thought experiment. Thought experiments have been used for millennia to help extrapolate on a concept that might otherwise be impossible to recreate, and there's a whole branch of philosophy on how thought experiments work and whether or not they're effective. But I don't have time to go into all that. Or the patience, really. Whether television and movies count as thought experiments is something that philosophers and media scholars have debated for a long time, probably as long as the moving picture has been around. Creating characters and placing them into situations is what a story is, and could easily be transposed to the realm of thought experiment, and I think The Good Place and its writers are acutely aware of this. And I think the reason that I can make this kind of declaration is because the show is constantly reminding us of the fact that everything the characters do is an experiment or unprecedented. The whole first season is Michael's experiment in torture. The entire show is based on teaching bad people, or a demon, to be good, and if that's even doable. Right up until the very end when the show comes up with a new system for The Good Place and how to treat other people. Even in the finale where the characters confront death, the show gives us a new experimental way of thinking about dying. Everything about the show is about presenting the audience with hypotheticals and seeing how they turn out. And a lot of them are failures, and the show doesn't shy away from showing us even when its characters royally fork up. Nor does it shy away from showing the limitations of thought experiments themselves. These characters are hyperbolized for comedy's sake, and the situations that they find themselves in are similar to the real world, but they're not always super realistic. This is the main reason thought experiments are thought to be dicey for the purposes of drawing conclusions in philosophy. They're often too sanitary in how they are set up, and often forego important variables that would affect execution. In episode 6 of season 2, the show makes this very clear. The name of that episode is called The Trolley Problem, and as the title suggests, it's about the thought experiment in which a person has to decide between two tracks set to hit one person, or ten people. Chidi uses this experiment to help Michael understand the value of people, but when Michael sets up the experiment, Chidi just panics and runs over people, which undercuts the point of what he was trying to prove. Bring ponchos, it gets messy. Because in reality, that experiment has way too many other factors going on. When it was just a thought experiment, Chidi could easily think about what he should do, but he never stopped to think about what he was actually capable of doing when faced with that situation. I, I, I've never actually done this before. This is, this is a theoretical fantasy. How do you roll a boat? So the thought experiment is essentially useless. However, this presentation is in itself a thought experiment as the situation was created and contrived based on the character's behavior and the trajectory of the show's plot. The point isn't that thought experiments are good or bad, but simply that the show wants us, the audience, to think about how it presents these situations and characters, and how they might be useful for teaching philosophy. And they are very useful, but that doesn't mean that they are particularly realistic. The show is presenting its viewers with the tools to think about how they're being taught philosophy, and to be skeptical of the thought experiments presented to them. And it does this all while still being hilarious. 
Chidi on the trolley is traumatized, but it's a great way to convey the problem with thought experiments, and it's presented in a way that's comedic without reducing the value of the lesson. And yes, I know I already said that, but this is the true genius of The Good Place, and so I'm allowed to say it again. And I'm probably gonna say it one more time when I do the conclusion. Speaking of which... The Good Place was for a long time the smartest show on television. The writing was clever, and the characters were intelligent, or at least entertaining in Jason's case, but it was the way that philosophy was presented to the characters and how they were used to create interesting and engaging narratives for audiences to watch that really made this show stand out. And as audiences watched, audiences learned about the concept of that episode, which was acted out and then presented as a thought experiment to the viewer. The show knew that it was doing all of this and expected its audiences to think critically about the power of fiction when used as a thought experiment, including the benefits and dangers that this might create. And yes, it did all of this while being funny, but it's also considerably empathetic, both to its characters and to its viewers. The show is constantly pushing the power of empathy, and it's often the central point of any of the ethical and existential queries outlined. And that is why I think The Good Place is not only a smart show about philosophy, but also a show about teaching philosophy, and specifically teaching what do we owe each other. Here are my stray thoughts. Although I would have liked to have seen more of the show, I'm super glad that the showrunners got to end it on their terms rather than dragging it out until it was no longer funny or smart. I wish more shows would follow that lead. I really like how the reason that people weren't getting into the good place turned out to be unintended consequences of their actions rather than a plot point. It was in that moment that I really appreciated how special this show was. I really enjoyed how the show dealt with immortality and the existential boredom that would occur if you can just do everything forever. People don't really think about what eternity actually means when they imagine it. Oh, like a thought experiment. Hey, thanks so much for checking out that video. If you want to hear more about my thoughts on existentialism and Jean-Paul Sartre, check out this video I did on Soul. Go check out our other channel, The Cinecasters, for more conversations about movies. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you'll never miss another episode of This Is A Thing, the long and the short of it, and whatever else we got coming down the pipe right here on Cinemasters Ultimate Timeline. Ah!